let us pray. Dear God, you bless us with your presence, whether we see you or not. You soothe us by listening to us, even though our words may be unspoken. You keep us in your protective embrace without ever hugging us. Thank you for all of these loving gifts. Amen. Hey friends, it's so good to see you again. Welcome back to Bible Basics. Once again, we're starting a new lesson that delves into the pages of the Old Testament. And you can see what we'll be looking at, if you can read that. We're going to move into a book of First Samuel. And the very first story in that book of First Samuel is the story of a woman named Hannah who has some important things to teach us. This unit is going to be looking at how the Israelite people are beginning to form a nation. And Hannah's story is where it all starts. One of the things Hannah is going to be teaching us is about the power of prayer. So before we jump into Hannah's story, let's look at exactly what prayer is. Prayer plays a big part in our story today. So, what is prayer? Well, prayer is the way we communicate with God. God desires to have a relationship with each of us. An important part of any relationship is communication. People of all nations and all religions find prayer to be important in their lives. Our Episcopal prayer book explains how our church views prayer. The daily practice of making time and space to speak with God, to listen to God, or simply to be with God, clears the pathway for God to enter our lives. Remember, God loves us and wants to communicate with us. Prayer is more than just saying thanks to God before we eat or asking God for a new bike. It's a special way of communicating everything about our lives with God. And best of all, God wants us to talk with Him. Think of prayer as having a chat with God. C-H-A-T. Use the chat method to compose your prayers. Start with C, confession. That's when we tell God the ways we have turned away from following Him. H is for honor. We honor God in our prayers by describing His power and mercy. A is ask. Asking is when we lay our request before God. And T, thanks. End your prayers with a statement of thanks. 
as we read in the book of Philippians. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Here are just a few more thoughts about prayer. Prayer, as we've said, is how we communicate with God. We can pray any time and any place and anywhere. You can pray out loud or Pray silently. You can talk with God about anything. No subject is too big or too small. You can find lots of fancy prayers for lots of subjects in our Book of Common Prayer. These can be handy for those times when you just don't know what to say. Or you can just talk to God aloud or quietly about what is important to you. Just remember, you probably will not hear a voice reply to your prayers, but God is listening. God may not answer your prayer right away or in the way that you wish, but God listens and God loves. Now let's get a little background for our story of Hannah. First, let's look at the area where the Israelites have moved into, the land of Canaan. The Israelite people have settled all around this region. The people have formed 12 groups based on their families called tribes. No, not that kind of tribe. These tribes, known as the 12 tribes of Israel, had no government or army. They were just a very loose collection of tribes that farmed the land and moved about. They knew little about combat or warfare. The tribes lived in lands where other tribes resided as well. Sometimes the people from these different groups interacted with each other. Sometimes they fought with one another. Two groups that you will see mentioned frequently in the Old Testament were the Amalekites and the Philistines. The Amalekites were a very rough bunch of people who frequently conducted violent raids against the Israelite tribes. The Philistines were more sophisticated than the Amalekites, but they too could be cruel and barbaric enemies. Plus, they were superior warriors with stronger weapons.
Another thing we need to look at is the Israelites' religious life at this time. Do you remember the two stone tablets on which God had written the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments had been written on two pieces of stone and were very precious to the Israelites. They kept them in a golden box called the Ark of the Covenant. Yep, if you've ever seen the old movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, that is the Ark Indiana Jones was seeking. The Ark was also important to them because it reminded them of God's covenant that he would be with them. God, if you will remember, had made this special promise or covenant with Abraham and his descendants, the Israelites. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you to be your God. Here's an illustration of what the ark was thought to look like. The ark had rings along its sides. Two strong wooden beams could be pushed through the rings on two sides of the gold box, allowing the Israelites to hoist the box up. By placing the two wood beams on the shoulders of four strong people, the ark could be moved from place to place. because the people of Israel spent many years traveling before they found a place to settle, they made a portable tent or tabernacle which they could set up anywhere. The ark was kept in this tent and in the area around it, sacrifices and prayers were made each day to God. This was the most important place of worship for the Israelites. So, this loosely connected group of 12 tribes had no central government, just a shared faith and an important symbol of their relationship with God, this ark. Eventually, the ark found a more permanent place to stay, a town called Shiloh. A more permanent tabernacle was built around the ark, and Israelites from the various tribes would come to worship in Shiloh. A change is coming to the wandering tribes of the Hebrew people, and it begins with a woman named Hannah. Our story today comes from the Children's Bible in 365 stories. When the people of Israel settled in Canaan, the gold covenant chest, the most precious object in God's tent, was placed in the care of priests at a place called Shiloh. The people used to visit Shiloh to bring presents to God and to celebrate together. Elkanah was an Israelite who brought his family to Shiloh every year. He had two wives, Panina, who had children, and Hannah, who had none. Hannah
Hannah was desperate for a child of her own. Cheer up, Hannah, Elkanah would say. I love you. Doesn't that help? But Hannah could not cheer up when Panina kept teasing and taunting her and showing off her own boys and girls. Hannah dreaded the annual expedition to Shiloh. These were happy family times, and Panina took care to see that Hannah felt miserable and left out. One year, Hannah could bear it no longer. When they sat down for the special family meal, she could only pick at the food. She slipped away from the table and went to the door of the shrine where the covenant chest was kept. She began to pray as the tears rolled down her cheeks. Please don't forget me, God, she begged. I am so unhappy. I want a child so badly. If you will give me one, I promise that I will give him back to serve you all his life long. I want you to note here that Hannah's prayer was a secret prayer spoken in silence. Her lips moved, but she uttered no sound. At this time, prayers were spoken out loud. It was unusual that someone would pray in silence. Someone was watching Hannah. Eli, the old priest, was sitting quietly at the door, wondering whatever was wrong with this woman. Perhaps she had drunk too much wine at the feast. He went to talk to her. I am not drunk, Hannah told Eli, only very sad and upset. I have asked God to help me. Then go in peace, Eli said, and may God answer your prayer. Hannah went back to Elkanah and Panina, feeling peaceful and almost happy. She even felt hungry again. All the way home, her heart seemed lighter. She had told God her trouble. Now she would wait for his answer. So, did Hannah end up having a child? Does the answer really matter? Remember, Hannah's heart was lifted by just praying, speaking with God about her problems. Hannah shows us how communicating with God can improve our lives. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about Hannah today. So how does her story end? I know you're curious and you probably have an idea about how it ends. Let's look at this video from those creative people at Saddleback Kids and see how the story ends. Slapstick Theater, Hannah and God. This is Hannah. Hi. Hannah was married to a man named Elkanah. Hey. But they were not able to have any children. This made Hannah sad. Aww. It's okay. Come on. Every year, Hannah and Elkanah would go to the house of the Lord 
at Shiloh to pray to God and offer sacrifices. Hannah would cry out and pray to the Lord. She told God that if he gave her a son, she would give him back to him and that her son would serve God all the days of his life. <laughs> Hannah was so upset that one of the priests, Eli, thought there was something off about her. But Hannah told him that she had been praying because she had a broken heart. <laughs> Eli told her, May the God of Israel grant the request you've made. Thank you. And then Hannah was no longer sad. In due time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Yeah! She named him Samuel, for she said, I asked the Lord for him. Hannah did as she said she would, and once Samuel was a little older, she took him to the temple. Hannah prayed and gave thanks to God, and Samuel grew up in the temple serving the Lord. Well, guys, thank you for joining me this week as we learned about Hannah and the power of prayer. Miss Chris and I have two craft videos for you to accompany this lesson. And there's also a puzzle this week, if I'm not mistaken. So check out the Jigsaw online. We'll see you next week as we continue learning about these beginning formations of the Israelite nation. I think you're going to enjoy it. Bye.